At a recent meeting of the St. Louis African American History and Genealogical Society, the topic was a woman named Celia. In 1850, when she was 14 years old, Celia was purchased by widower Robert Newsom and brought to his farm in Callaway County, where for the next five years, she would be repeatedly raped. She gave birth to two of his children. And one night in 1855, she brought it all to an end by killing him and burning his body in her fireplace. She was charged, tried, convicted, and hanged. Um, and we're gonna share uh, Celia's tragic story of sexual exploitation. But Pamela Westbrooks Hodge, a member of the Missouri State Board of Education, only recently discovered that she was a descendant of Celia and Robert Newsom and is now one of the leaders of the Justice for Celia Coalition. But we also hope to share a new ending to Celia's story. So you're not just gonna hear the bad, you're going to hear uh, what we hope is the good that's going to come out of her tragedy. Um, there were other Celia so descendants in the audience, as well as white descendants of Robert Newsom and his wife, and whose own family research brought them so to this family gathering. Yeah. My heart, it almost, come right out of my chest because I had never imagined that at that time that I come from a line that owns slaves because Nancy Fogel Campos is now one of the coalition's lead genealogists but this is just the latest chapter in efforts to ensure that Celia's story is not forgotten Does everybody have a program in 1995, the late civil rights attorney, Margaret Bush Wilson, hosted an event focused on Celia. There were also here descendants of Celia's daughter, Jenny. They knew it as a family story. The first time I heard the story of Celia, I was quite young. But uh, when I really became interested was in 1934. It's just always been something that my grandmother used to tell us about. No, she didn't dwell on it. It wasn't a constant thing, but periodically something might happen and she would say something about it. By this time, Celia's story had reached a national audience in a book that took its title from the court case, The State of Missouri versus Celia, a Slave. It was first published in 1991, more recently in a 30th anniversary edition. Before that, though, the story could pretty much only be found in law books, documents, and legal journals. And that's where Margaret Bush Wilson first came across Celia's case. And I keep telling people that Celia is a heroine of mine because when everything's get unsettled, I can simply remind myself that nothing, and I mean nothing that can happen to me, can compare with what this young woman encountered. And somehow there are no known images of Celia, so Margaret Bush Wilson commissioned artist Solomon Thurman to create a portrait that has come to represent Celia. This was still a time before internet research and DNA testing, but all of that has helped turn what had been a legal and academic topic to a more personal story of just who Celia was and how many people are connected to her. A copy of the Celia portrait had been hanging for years in the entryway of Pamela Westbrooks Hodge's St. Louis County home long before she was told her DNA confirmed her connection. Uh, one daughter, Jenny, came here and married yep. George Lewis, and we're all descendants. And last summer, of, she hosted some members uh, so of the black and white branches of the family, and they dug deep into the research. Look like you have, have a hit. <laughs> I've got a clue. Connected to a broad water. French settlement there. That was the first Next, place. they took a trip to Fulton, Missouri, where they were taken to the site of the Newsom Farm and the overgrown family graveyard. And there was a stop at the Kingdom of Callaway Historical Kingdom Society, 11, one of the partners in the coalition. So if we go through these detailed, these detailed records right here, we may be able to find some more family members. The Justice for Celia Coalition is working to have permanent Celia exhibits in Fulton and St. Louis. 
It wants her story taught in Missouri schools. It wants a monument erected to her in Fulton. The legal record is clear. Celia confessed to killing Robert Newsom, but her white defense attorney, a slave owner himself, did more than go through the motions. He argued that she had acted to protect herself from sexual assault and killed in self-defense. But the jury was not allowed to consider motive, and she was convicted. There is evidence that there were those in Fulton who considered what Newsom did morally wrong, but under Missouri law, Robert Newsom's actions were within his rights. And Celia? Well, she could be a criminal, but had no standing as a victim. The pro-slavery Missouri Supreme Court allowed Celia to be executed for murder. So why do you, th why do you think it's important that we know about this? So I'm having an out-of-body experience because my husband, uh, Harlan Hodge, posed that question to me a couple of days ago. He said, uh, Pamela, why is it important that, uh, why should anybody care about Celia? And I said, well, we should all care about Celia because her situation is representative of the vast majority of enslaved women of her time, uh, the reality of, of, of rape uh, during enslavement and, and bondage. And so we exist today because of their sacrifices, because of their toil. And so we owe it to them to tell their stories, uh, put a name with a face, and uh, honor them by uh, making sure that no one ever forgets uh, the shoulders that we're standing on. This is about a person who came and did an archaeological dig. Celia's case is no longer a footnote. Her story is written about, taught in universities. There are podcasts and videos. And now there's this effort for Missouri to bring justice for Celia. This is our shared heritage, and it is also probably, in my opinion, the biggest atrocity committed against, mass atrocity committed against uh, women of African descent that we've never talked about and I'm sure that no one's ever atoned for. For Living St. Louis, I'm Jim Kircher.